Okay, hi folks, it's me again. Uh, here we are to do some more formulae, uh, but this time we're going to look at formulae two, not one. Um, basically, you'll see my printer's working of sorts. I had to plug it in manually, but anyway, we've got something out of it, um, and we're going to continue a little bit of work on formulae. Now, um, uh, this will be your last. Um, this will be your last video lesson until we actually do our live lesson on. Uh, Microsoft Teams next week but um, and again I'll be reviewing some of the bits and bobs that we've done recently on that but um, um, looking at this we've got formulae and it's basically formulae has got the equals in the middle but it's connecting a load of letters you know a equals b add c that kind of thing or or x equals y times z they're all formulae uh, what we want to do is just get you comfortable with um, different sorts of formulae and, and the way that the different formulae can be written, I guess. Um, so basically any given formula can be written in lots of different ways. I would liken it to saying, if I said to you, 2 times 4 is equal to 8, you'd be like, yeah, I know it is. Uh, but I could also say, rearrange that, say, well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, or 8 divided by 4 is 2. They're basically all telling the same story, all three... Um, of those formulae, for want of a better word. Um, you can also do one add five is equal to six. Again, really easy, but six take away one is five, or six take away five is one. Again, rearrangement. So if we look at this here, what we've got is the first one here, we've got a line, which apparently the length of this line is A. The length of the first part of the line is B, and the length of the uh, second part of the line is C. And so if we were looking to create a formula for this, what would it be? Well, the whole thing is A, or the whole thing is B and C. So the most obvious one would be just to say that A, the big bit, is equal to B add C. And we know that to be true, so if you had numbers for them, that would have to be true. B add C would get you to A. But of course you've got rearrangements on that, so if you just wanted to know what B was in terms of A and C, you'd be like, well, hold on, how do I get B? Well, it's the whole thing take away this bit here. So a rearrangement of that would be to say that B is equal to A take away C. That has to be true as well. Or if you wanted to know what C was, C will be equal to A take away B. Now it's really important obviously with the takeaways, you get the order right. You know, So C equals A take away B is right. B take away is not right. So you've got to get them the right way around if you're going to make this work and get, the, uh, get it all right. This second one follows on again from what I was just saying a second ago about numbers, this time with times in them. So we've got a rectangle. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, area of a rectangle, you know what it is. The area of a rectangle is the two sides times together. So normally, we're, oh, 5 times 7, you know, 35. But this time, we've got PQ for the side length, so we've got A for the area. So if we were going to work out formulae for this, we'd simply be saying that the area, or A, is equal to P times Q. Now, because they're both letters, we won't write P times Q, we'll just write P, Q, because PQ means P times Q in math language. Yeah, done. So A does equal P, to P times Q, whatever it is. Um, if you want to do a rearrangement again, you say, well, if you just wanted to know what P was, for example, how would you get it? That side length. Well, you take the area, you divide by the other side length. So it would be A divided by Q. And that would be also true. It'd have to be. And if you want to know what Q was equal to, Q would be equal to A divided by P. So the number examples I spoke of at the start are obviously true, but you can do just the same using letters. Again, with this one, make sure A divided by Q is right, Q divided by A is not. And so you've got to get the order right if you're doing the divide or the take away. That's really important. It's all well and good when they're times, you know, Q, P and P, Q are the same. B add C is the same as C add B. But... The other way, you've got to get it right. So when we actually do some maths like this, and we see um, a formula written, A plus 3B equals C, let's go, well, what am I supposed to do? What's equal to? You know, what's B equal to? I don't know. That's the whole point. I don't know what A, B, or C are equal to. I don't care. It's a formula. You're not supposed to know them. That's why you get them all in science. But at the moment, you know, if we add A to three lots of B, we get C. So when we talk about the word the subject of, that basically means what you are ending up with. So at the moment, the subject is C. Basically, you are finding out what C is equal to. C is equal to A at 3B. If you wanted to make A the subject, we've got to have A equals something or something equals A. That's the whole point. So all we need to do 
is basically use all the stuff we've done with equations and rearrange this. So if we want A on its own, you're going to be like, well, hold on. Currently, I've got a plus 3B beside the A. We've got to get rid of that then. If we want to have A on its own, we'll need to take away 3B. I'm just going to write it in a circle like I do with the equations. Of course, you're doing that to the left. You've got to do that to the right as well. And so the answer in this case will be A equals C minus 3B. And the logic's there. So all you've done is just rearrange the equation or the formula so you've got another letter left on its own. It was C on the right-hand side. Now it's A on the left-hand side. So A would now be the subject. So this one here, a bit more complicated. In some ways, got more letters. A add B add C equals D. OK, so what letter's currently the subject? D. What sort of letter do we want to be the subject? A. So we need to basically find out what A is equal to. But at the moment, we've got a plus B plus C. I'll do this one in stages, although you probably wouldn't need to. So we we're going to get rid of the other bits on Bob's on the left-hand side. So first of all, get rid of the C. How do you get rid of an add C? You take it away. So if we're going to take away C from the left, we better do the same to the right. So we're going to be left with A add B. And now that's equal to D take away C. But we've still not got A on its own, we've still got the plus B. We need to get rid of it, so we'll do a minus B. Of course, we'll do that to the other side as well. And so now, finally, we've got A on its own, but we've got D minus C, and we're also going to take away B. And that would be your answer. So D, take away C, take away B. I know it sounds a bit abstract, and of course it's easy when you're just dealing with numbers, as in numbers that you know what the values are, but the logic is the same when you're doing it with letters. So the next bit, make A the subject of the formula here. We'll just have a look. A take away 3B is C. Well, what's the opposite of take away 3B? Plus 3B. That's not phi B, that's 3B. So if we do that, if we add 3B to the both sides, we'll end up with A equals C add 3B. Again, using the terminology we did with equations, do the opposite to what's already been done. So in this case, a, B equals C, or A times B equals C. Remember, that's what it means. If we want A on its own, how do you get rid of this B? It's currently a times B. What's the opposite of times B? Divide B. So we need to divide both sides by B. And so if we do that, we'll end up with A is C divided by B. Notice how I write it, like the fraction, not with the divide sign. This one, we've currently got A divided by B equals C. All right. We want to have A as the subject, we want A on its own, so we've got to get rid of that divide by B. What's the opposite of divide by B? Times by B. And so if we do that to the left, we've got to do the same to the right. So A equals, interesting, would we write CB here? It is correct if you do CB, but it's better because, of course, you know multiplication in the order doesn't matter to write BC. It's just a bit nicer, isn't it, rather than CB. And the last one here, trickiest one, we've got AB divided by C equals D. Whew. I don't know what it all means anyway, but it's just like a connection between low letters. We want A on its own, though, so we've got to get rid of the other stuff. So I always think get rid of the bits that are sort of furthest away from what you're going to leave there. So I would say that B is snuggled up to the A, but the divide by C is further away. So we'll get rid of the divide by C first. So we'll times both sides by C. That leaves me with AB on the left, and we've got D times C. So DC, yeah, it's correct. I think it's a Washington DC, but we're going to write CD instead. We'll stick with the alphabet. Now we're going to get rid of the bit that's left. So we want A on its own. We've still got this B lurking around, so we need to divide by B. So I'll just put that there, divide by B both sides. And of course, A equals CD divided by B. And there's your final answer. OK, so a bit abstract, I understand, a bit complicated. What I'll do, I'll give you some similar questions to this, OK? Similar questions, uh, but nothing harder, certainly, and see if you can have a go at those. OK, good luck, and I will be in touch with you, uh, and you'll hear me live, woohoo, next week. OK, take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend.